In this video, I'm going to try and provide you with a few ideas how you can replace the rim joist that will be connecting to the other joist um, perpendicular to it or will be end nailing into the joist. Now, before we get started, let me see if I can provide you with a better idea of how these walls are supported by the joist and the rim joist. And here we can see where part of the joist itself is going to be underneath the wall framing. And on a two by four, the rim joist is usually going to be an inch and a half thick, which would leave us two inches of framing structural support underneath the wall, which in most cases that's going to be enough to support the wall and to hold it up and keep it from going anywhere. Now the rim joist on the other side that runs parallel to the other joist uh, is going to be a completely different matter and I already made a different video for that. I will put a link either here or at the end for that so that you can get an idea how to replace that one. This video is basically just dealing with this rim joist and the sill underneath it. Another situation you could run into is you might have blocks instead of a rim and this would simply be blocks that are in between the joists that go full width. They go instead of being only two inches um, sitting on top of a two by four plate let's say you would have three and a half inches of the joist sitting on top. And if it's a two by six, like we have here, you've got five inches, five and a half inches sitting on top here, and then five and a half inches supporting the wall above, which uh, the blocks, like I said, they can usually just be knocked out and replaced. If they are damaged, the ceiling joists, that would require another video, and I think I've already made that video. Now, if it's just a little bit of damage to the rim joist, you can simply cut it out and replace it without any problem. If you need to do long sections of this, sometimes it's going to be a good idea to do small pieces at a time, maybe four feet, four feet um, at a time, and then just put a strap or some type of a connector if you're worried about getting some type of uh, strength um, for it. But you know, to pop the whole thing off and uh, replace it, that could be questionable uh, depending upon the framing, what type of framing is above the floor. Here's a situation where it's a little longer. You could cut this out. I would, I would say you'd be safe up to five feet. If these are 16 inches on center. That would be one, two, three. That would be four foot here. So this is probably about uh, five foot. 10 inches, almost six foot. And I, I think even a, a six foot piece of rim could be replaced at one, one shot most of the time. I'm just throwing that out there a bit. But uh, again, these videos are only suggestions for ways you can repair something. They are not always going to work for your particular project. Here's another suggestion. If you have some damage, you could always install some blocks before you remove the rim. And of course, I removed the rim here to give you an idea of what it would look like, a better view of it. But uh, you could just simply block in between these and that would be almost just like having a, a, another rim and you would just leave it in. When you're done, just install the rim joist over the blocks and uh, you're gonna have a little stronger area. So if you let's just say you needed to replace 18 feet of uh, the rim that's damaged, but the sill's in good shape, the joist is in good shape. You could simply block in between each joist or block every other joist and then remove the rim and reinstall it. And again, these are just ideas. You don't have to do it this way. I'm just trying to make uh, some people feel a little more comfortable with, uh, you know, the kind of creating stronger ways to repair things. So this block here, I just kind of let it stick out here just to show you that it was a block. It's even with the with the inside of the framing plate. Um, if you want, you could put multiple blocks in here, two or three blocks, but that would be unnecessary, I would imagine, most of the time. So after you have installed your blocks, you can simply cut out the damage. And if you don't want to install the blocks on the side here because you might need to cut it with a Sawzall or something, then you can always install the blocks after it's cut and then install the rim joists. Now, if you do need to replace the sill that the joists are sitting on because it's damaged uh, it, and this part's a lot easier than the one on this side. 
you just need to simply put something underneath it with some type of a support. In here, I'm using a couple of jacks and a beam. We got a four by six. I believe this is about a six foot beam. And you could jack it up on one side and install some blocks underneath this and uh, or use a screw jack. Screw jacks are always great for this type of repair. But here's the damage that's going to need to be repaired. So you wouldn't need to go all the way. But this is going to provide you with the support as these joists cantilever out a little bit. So I would say maybe keep it about a foot away from the wall. And if the joists are damaged, this wouldn't this might not work because you're if the joists are damaged, they're not going to be supporting the walls enough. So kind of what it would look like from below. Another view of it there. You can see where it's supporting these. And again, this is the damage that's going to be replaced. Put the roof back on it. Cut your damage to stuff out the rim and the plate if necessary. If the rim doesn't need to be cut, great. You could probably cut the plate out with a sawzall, I would imagine and do a little bit of damage to the rim, but it would be fine. And then you can see here how the beam and the jack is supporting, providing support for the joist, which is still holding up the wall. Put the plate back in and that is it for that repair. And again, this idea right here can be done. You know, if you have, you can do it in sections. If you're worried about it, okay, I'm going to only do it in uh, three or four foot sections and a time and make sure everything is fastened securely and then go to the next section if you needed to do um, repair a long board. So anyway, I hope that makes sense and I am going to create a playlist eventually for videos just dealing with crawl space repairs and I'm probably even going to redo some of my older videos to try and put a little more information in um, shorter videos and for those of you who've been watching my videos for a long time know that a short video probably isn't going to happen so enough talking and it is off to the next video